To get started with the new color tools in Final Cut 10, there's a couple of approaches. You can press this little icon to bring up the color inspector or press the old standby command six to do it instead. I'm going to hide the transitions and double click here in the inspector to make it double height as usual. And the color board here is pretty similar to how it used to be. If you like the color board, then you can keep using it and it's still capable. It is a good color correction method. However, there are a few new choices. Head to this little menu and you can add either a color board, color wheels, color curves, or hue saturation curves. We're going to start by adding color wheels. Color wheels give you more or less the power of the color board in a more traditional way and all in one pane together. You have master control, shadows, midtones, and highlights, just like the color board offers. Except each one of these controls has a color shift in the middle, a saturation control over on the left hand side, and a brightness or luminance control over on the right. Each one can be reset with the little arrow. And if we bring up the scopes with the standard command seven, and I'll just hide the library to make some more room, I can see that this image could be improved by perhaps bringing the shadows down a little bit by bringing the highlights up and maybe bringing the midtones down a little and then the highlights up a little bit more. I might increase the saturation in the shadows and in the midtones, give it a bit more of a rich look. And I could, if I needed to remove a color cast, shift the highlights, whichever way I want. Now I'm happy with that look there, but let's have a look at the next image. So I'm going to start this one out with a quick automatic correction. Pop back here so I can do the white balance and I'm just going to click on the clouds in the background there. Command six to jump back to the color and I'll go back into the color wheels. I'm going to up the saturation in the shadows and the midtones to give a really rich, vibrant look. I'm going to push the highlights around in color until I get something which I like a little better. And because I want a slightly darker feel, I'm going to bring down the brightness in the midtones and push it up in the highlights, keeping an eye on the scopes to make sure that everything still looks balanced. If you want to take something a little further, for example, in this clip, and I'm going to add in another color wheels, then you've got temperature, tint, and hue controls, which you can use to push things between cyan and yellow for temperature, and then green and magenta for tint. These are really very useful controls for correcting a color cast. Here's a quick before, after, if you prefer that look. I'll bring up the vector scope. You can see that a hue shift here is going to spin that vector, vector scope around. Very useful if something's just a little bit off. And there's also numeric controls for each of these separate master, shadows, midtones, and highlights controls. You can adjust the red, green, and blue, or the saturation or brightness, all by dragging on the numbers. I'll just go for the shadows, and you can see that these three controls move the central number around. Saturation governs the control on the left, and brightness the control on the right. It's a really comprehensive set of controls and a really compact way to look at everything without having to jump around the different boards that the color board does. 
if you prefer one big control, you can choose to see a single wheel at a time and switch between the different tabs at the top. This isn't all to color though. We've got lots and lots of curves we can control as well. I'll show you that next.